Hi everybody, this is Leo Vallant with part 9 of, of this series. Let me read you the chapter heading. Part 9, Jesus the Jew versus Christianity. The flip side of free sin, original sin and people as inherently evil. Are we judged on our history or final character? Hey, you remember how all this got started? With the online Christians telling us that Satan infiltrates our very own dreams and that our only chance for avoiding damnation is through the blood of Christ? Well, we did not discuss that doctrine, did we? It, but it is sort of the other side of the coin to the free sin doctrine. One is either saved or not. Christian doctrine is both a carrot and a whip. So we need to talk about the even darker side of Christianity. It's not as though we have a choice. It's not as though we have the option to say, no thank you, murdering Jesus is too high a price to pay for some easy and convenient salvation. I prefer to be as good and just as I can and, and trust in the wisdom and mercy of the angel in judgment. I am sure I will be disposed of fairly. Well, Christian doctrine thought of that and blocked it off with the doctrine of original sin. Well, this is what that doctrine entails. It seems that, yes, that while sin can be forgiven, sin is also inevitable. It's intrinsic to human nature, inescapable, and, and that our lives and characters are hopelessly polluted. So Christianity offers no righteousness option. We can't opt out. Satan is the king of this world, and if Christians hadn't murdered Jesus with their own hands to trade his blood for their sin, then they would all certainly burn in hell. But shouldn't Christians feel guilty about that? You know, I find it incomprehensible that, that Christians celebrate Easter, the anniversary of their, of their crime literally against God, or they believe Jesus to be God. It's, th this Christian certainly can't dodge the guilt of having murdered Jesus since they, they're so forward in claiming all the benefits that accrue from it. We know it was the Romans who drove in the spikes, and like themselves, they were Gentiles. And for all the talk of sacrifice, it was not the Jews that killed their own Messiah. It's the people who killed the Messiah were Gentiles. But, but couldn't they find one of their own to butcher? Why did they have to butcher a Jew? A Jew? It's the Greeks have 20 gods on top of Mount Olympus, and none of them would do? It's, was the meat of Hercules too tough for the older plate? Or was Hercules too strong for them to subdue? And they went and searched for a meeker, milder murder victim. I wonder how it is that Christians hear, hear about the the legends of vampires who drink human blood for immortality, and they don't see it as an allegory for themselves. It's ironic that they murdered Jesus so, they, so that they wouldn't burn in hell. What will they say to the angel of judgment who on the last day asks them? Given the choice of living righteously or murdering a man you thought to be as pure as God so you could trade his blood for every kind of sin and abomination, well, how did you choose? And again, I can remind you, the angels aren't very sentimental. Now, yes, let's continue. Can we reasonably move beyond this doctrine of original sin. Many Christians, knowing only what they've been told, will demand of me how God is supposed to treat sinners, for all men have sinned. 
if heaven could be earned only by souls that had never sinned and that it is a reasonable given that everyone must have sinned at one time or another, then any per perfect righteousness would be impossible. And so wouldn't a perfect heaven be perfectly empty? Well, aren't Christians misstating the situation? What does the complete moral history of our lives matter if on our last day we are righteous in character? We do not throw our clothes out at the end of the day because they have lost their laundered freshness because it's easy enough just to wash them again. Paul's doctrine presupposes that sin leaves permanent stains. Huh? Well, of course not. It's Why do we allow Paul to hypnotize us with, with such nonsense? People make stupid mistakes all the time, but the rest of their lives and their innate character are not indelibly stained by it. Unless they posted it on Facebook. Uh, to show you how sin in the real world, world, real world works, well, take the instance of almost every young man who will get drunk at, at one time or another and say, I'll never do that again, and he won't. Well, not until he forgets, but every succeeding time it becomes easier to remember. People of good character only get better with age. So my point is that people live and learn. If people are told that social moral goodness is possible and preferable, and if they are rewarded for it, then they will learn righteousness through trying to live righteously. If they fall in the mud, well, they only have to take a bath. There should never be any need for murdering Jewish messiahs for their blood. Anyway, let's keep going.